Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, praise our God. Uh, today, we want to continue our study in Luke chapter 8. Amen. Uh, it, this has been a very exciting uh, chapter. Last week, we talked about Jesus being Lord over every situation of your life. Excuse me. We looked at Jesus calming the sea with his word. Peace, be still. We saw him cast out a legion of demons from a man. Found the man clothed and in his right mind. Exciting things happening in chapter 8. Some say this is all in a day, a day's work in the life of Jesus. All in, the, in a day's work in the life of Jesus. Amen. Clearly, verses 40 and 50 through 46, which we're looking at today, is all in a normal day's ministry in the life of Jesus. All in a normal day's ministry in the life of of Jesus. So let's look a little closely here. Amen. Jesus heals a woman and Jairus' daughter. Jesus heals a woman and Jairus' or Jairus. How about Jairus' daughter? Okay. All right. Okay. Verse 40. Father, we ask your blessings on this lesson. May it touch lives. May men and women receive their healing as they listen to this message. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Now, as I said, this is all in a normal day of ministry for Jesus. Uh, they were waiting for him. He was a popular Jesus at this time. They gladly received him. Now, he was just rejected by the Gadareans. You know, as he cast the legion out and they found him in the, uh, uh, this man clothed in his right mind. Of course, there were 2,000 pigs that lost their lives. And these people were afraid of Jesus and they asked him to leave. But here, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> but here, uh, they gladly received him. Praise our God. Amen. And of course, when one gladly received Jesus, great and exciting things are going to happen. Anyway, uh, so the Bible says, and behold, verse 41, there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come in to his house. Now, Jairus, Jairus had great respect for Jesus. He fell at his feet. He had no shame, though he was a ruler of the synagogue. He urged Jesus to come to his home and heal his daughter that was near death. He believed that Jesus could heal, wanted to heal, and would heal. What about you? Now, I'm reading from other gospels, the same account. In Matthew 9, 18, it says, while he spake these things unto them, 
there came a certain ruler and worshiped him. Said, my daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him. So did his disciples. And of course, uh, when you go back uh, to the original Greek, you might see that he was said she was certainly near death and she looked like she was dead. But uh, nevertheless, his faith picture was that if Jesus would come and lay his hands on her, uh, she would live. And so the, the disciples did a lot of ministry through the laying on of, of hand. Somebody says uh, 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 contact and transmission. Anyway, praise our God. Now, Mark, the same account in Mark, uh, beginning at verse 22, he says, Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, said, My little daughter, life at the point of death. I pray thee, come, lay thy hands on her, and she, that she may be healed, and she shall live. A man of faith, a man of confidence. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Wow. Listen, amen. Uh, back to Luke chapter 8, verse 42. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of, old, of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, people thronged him. People thronged him. Notice, Jesus' willingness to heal. He was on his way to Jairus' house to heal his only child. The crowd thronged him. He had to press through, but he was determined to get there. Verse 43, And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. Praise our God. A lot of stuff going on here. Jesus pressing himself through the crowd to get to Jairus' house. A woman in the crowd pressing herself through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. She was a woman in need. She was a woman who had spent all of her resources trying to be healed, but only got worse. A woman who had heard about Jesus and believed that she could get healed. Yeah, she heard about him, even though she had spent all her money, even though she was destitute, probably discouraged, feeling forsaken, amen? But she heard about Jesus, praise God. And faith was birthed in her. And so she was a woman who heard about Jesus and believed that she could get healed. She believed that not only she could get healed, she believed that Jesus, uh, God wanted to heal. Amen, that he could do the work. And so, uh, she was a woman of great faith. Mark says in 525 beginning, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. And that, that's speaking to someone out there, uh, some of you in that same situation, but I'm telling you, he can heal. I don't care what the situation is. There's nothing too hard for God. I don't care who you know who died with that situation. Get your eyes off it, get your mind off it, and get your focus on Jesus like this woman. Listen, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Hey, 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 if I can just touch his clothes, I'm going to be healed. Praise our God. Amen. Not only did she believe it in her heart, but she confessed it with her mouth. And that's what the Bible says about salvation. If you believe it in your heart, that Jesus is Lord and he died on the cross for your sin. 
if you confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, you shall be saved. But it's no difference than healing. Amen. You got to believe it in your heart. You need to confess it in your mouth. And the work shall be done. Well, praise our God. She knew that 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 she knew. Well, praise our God. Listen, this woman, amen, this woman had radical faith. Biblical faith is radical faith. Now, it's intelligent faith, but it's radical faith. Amen. Biblical faith says the thing that I hope for is mine now. Amen. This woman says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. This woman had radical faith. She was determined to receive her miracle. What about you? The Bible says the violent take it by force. It says since the days of, of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been preached, but the violent take it by force. Take your healing. Take it. Take your healing. Take it. What do you need from God? What has he promised you? Take it. Take it by force. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Be militant. Be aggressive. Believe God. Dare to believe God. Dare to step out on faith. Dare to claim the promises of God. Take it. The Bible says that God gave the promised land to the Israelites. But they had to take it by force. They saw those chariots saw those giants, and they began to get scared. Don't govern your life by what you see. Govern your life by what God says. They had to go into the promised land. They had to take it. Even though God said it was theirs, they had to fight every step of the way. The devil resisted him every step of the way. He's going to resist you every step of the way. Take it! This woman had radical faith. She was determined to receive her miracle. What about you? This woman had shameless persistence. She was unclean, yet she could not be denied. I mean, because she had an issue of blood, she was supposed to be saying like unclean or, or either she, she had to stay away from the crowd, keep herself separated according to the law. But this woman was not going to be denied. She was going to get to Jesus. She was going to touch him. She knew that she would be made whole. She was sick and weak. Yet she pressed through the crowd with all her might. This woman had shameless persistence. Perhaps she was feeling rejected. She didn't even consider talking to Jesus face to face. Perhaps she was so weak that she could only muster up enough strength to get close enough to touch his garment. Perhaps her strength gave out round about the time she had pressed through that crowd. And as she fell, she stretched her hand out and she touched the hem of his garment. I don't know. But the woman had shameless persistence. When you begin to believe God for something, you begin to pray for something, continue to pray until you receive it. Shameless persistence. Don't take what seemed to be no as no. The woman, the Syrophoenician woman, I believe in the 17th chapter of Matthew. Amen came to Jesus because her daughter was demonized. And the disciples said, send her away. And Jesus says, we cannot take the children's bread and give it to dogs. She could have been embarrassed. She could have got upset that he's calling me a dog. And somebody said, calling Gentiles the dogs was like the N-word. It was very offensive. But she knew that Jesus had what she needed. And she shameless persists. She says, yea, Lord, but the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. 
And Jesus says, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done unto you, even as you believe. And her daughter was healed that very hour. She received what she needed. She would not be denied. What about you? What about you? Sometimes we get just to the place where our miracles are about to break forth and we quit. We give up. We get discouraged. Shameless persists. Verse 44. It says the woman came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched. In another gospel in Mark 5.28 beginning, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Praise God. God gave her witness. Amen. Praise God. Her healing was manifested. Amen. Praise our God. God is a faith God. What do you mean? He honors faith. Amen. Praise God. We think he's going to honor our tears, uh, our crying. Listen, I mean, he could. He's God. And he can choose to do that. But as a rule, God is not moved by your tears, but he's moved by your faith. Amen. He's moved by your faith. He's not moved by your pain. He's moved by your faith. Praise God. Now, he's God. Now, once he moved by your uh, uh, get moved by your faith, he can say, I saw your tears. I heard you crying. That's what he said about Israel. I, I heard you crying down there in Egypt. So I, I, I sent Moses. But listen, as a rule, though, God's going to respond to your faith. All right, let's, let's keep going. Amen. There are two things the Bible says it's impossible. Well, it's three. Well, no, okay, two things that God says are possible, okay? The Bible says, the first thing is that all things are possible with God. There's no question in our mind that it's all things are possible with God. We hear folks says, well, amen, God can do anything but fail. But that's not biblical faith. Well, I know that God can do anything but fail. That's not biblical faith, amen? Because that's not saying the thing that I believe God for and I hope for is mine now. Oh, uh, no. You're not there. You're just talking about I believe God can do anything but fail. But that's not biblical faith. Praise God. God's going to honor your faith. Amen. But biblical faith is radical. Biblical faith is seizing it and claiming that it's yours based on the promises of God. And you know that you know because God said it. <laughs> Somebody says, well, I'm not going to believe that I'm healed until the pain stops. Well, you probably won't get healed by God. Because you got to believe that you're healed before the pain stops. You got to believe that you're healed because God said it. Oh, well, somebody says, yeah, you know, I, I, I got blindness, but I ain't going to believe God healed me until I can see. No, no, no. That's faith in you, what you see. You got to have faith in God's word. This woman says, if I can touch him of his garments, I know I would be made whole. She already knew it. Well, praise our God. Radical faith. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Amen. I'm believing that somebody's going to get healed. As his word goes forth, I'm believing that somebody is going to be healed. And I want to hear that testimony. Somebody's faith is going to rise up. As a result of this, this message, somebody's going to lay hold to God. They're going to know that they know that they know. They're going to feel in themselves that God has moved mightily. <laughs> well, praise God. I remember a lady was here, and uh, she was telling me that she had AIDS. And I just felt impressed to pray for her. So I prayed for her in the name of Jesus. I rebuked that AIDS and whatever. Anyway. That woman felt in herself that she was healed. She said, I'm healed. Praise God. He, he healed me, she said. And she was rejoicing. 
And I said, uh, you know, don't go off any medicine. I'll go talk to you. I'm not taking any more. I look, sister, don't do that. Go to your doctor. Amen. So I don't tell anybody to stop taking any medicine. You let your doctor take you off. But that woman, I, I, I don't know what happened to her. I would love to hear her testimony. But nevertheless, praise our God. Listen. Amen. So Matthew 19, 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So we know that all things are possible with God. No question about it. But guess what the scripture says? The second all things that are possible, the Bible says all things are possible for you, if you can believe it. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And him there means him, uh, male and female. Listen, all things are possible to him or her that believe. Amen. I say claim your miracle. I don't care what the diagnosis of the doctors. Claim your miracle. I, I, I didn't tell you stop. I just said claim it. God's going to manifest some things in your life, okay? Well, praise our God. Praise our God. We thank God for his goodness. What a mighty God. Listen, listen. All things are possible for God. All things are possible to you. Luke 8, 45. And Jesus said, who touched me? <laughs> and when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And says thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Amen. Healing virtue went out of him. Praise our oh, God. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, somebody says, contact and transmission. We lay hands on the sick. Contact. Uh, the anointing in us, minister healing to them. Praise God. Now, granted, uh, the Holy Ghost is in you because if you're saved, but the Holy Ghost who has anointed me uh, to lay hands on the sick, I lay hands on the sick, contact. Transmission takes place, and I minister healing in the name of oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, by the power of Almighty God. Okay. All right here. Uh, somebody says, I feel like preaching now. <laughs> well, praise our God. So Jesus says, somebody touch me, he says. For I feel that healing virtue has gone out of me, okay? Amen. Praise God. Uh, Francis Hunter, uh, in the beginning of her ministry, when God began to teach her uh, about divine healing, <coughs> excuse me, she didn't know, know a whole lot of it, about it yet, but she was a woman of faith already. And... Uh, uh, this was even before God manifested an even greater anointing in her life. But some lady had called her, and this lady was on her, she was on a mat in her apartment. And she had sent for Frances Hunter. Uh, she had been someplace. She came in, and uh, she was kind of wondering why the lady wanted her there. And here is this lady on this mat. And she said to Frances Hunter, uh, could you come closer? And Frances Hunter was like, okay. And she said, could you come closer? And she was like, okay. And when she got close enough to the woman, the woman reached out and touched the hem of her skirt and bam, the power of God fell on that woman. She was instantly healed. <laughs> that woman had been praying, seeking God's face. And I don't know, God put Francis Hunter on her heart and, and she just believed in her heart. If I can just touch the hem of Francis Hunter's garment, I'll be made whole. And so Francis Hunter, they didn't know what was going on. The lady says, could you come a little closer? And she, the lady was laying on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, uh, on a mat in a, a apartment. Could you come a little closer? And when she touched the hem of her garment, bam, she was healed. Praise our God. Francis Hunter, like, I don't know what that woman had in mind. She going to touch my garment. I can't imagine anything in my garment. But I'm telling you what, healing virtue came out of her and heal that woman. Listen, I just want to tell you that the anointing is transferable. What do you mean the anointing is transferable? Amen. The anointing that was on Jesus, she touched the hem of his garment, came out of him, 
and into that woman and heal her. The anointing is transferable. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with all and pray for them. The anointing is transferable. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, Moses had laid hands on Joshua. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, how that Joshua uh, 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 was moving mightily in the Lord, how the people were so impressed. But they said, because Moses had laid his hands on him. There was a transfer. That's why when we anoint people, we lay hands. Why? There's a transference of anointing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The anointing is transferable. They took handkerchiefs from Paul's body in Acts 19, about verse 12. And they said when they took those handkerchiefs uh, 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 and laid on people, they were healed. Uh, demons were cast out. Why? The anointing is transferable. Praise our God. Now, there's a reverse thing. That's why you don't want anybody to lay hands on you because uh, they may have demons and they might be able to be transferred too. That's why the Bible says don't lay hands on anybody suddenly, okay? Amen. But praise God, uh, uh, the anointing is transferable, okay? So I'm careful uh, who lay hands on me, <laughs> amen? And I don't receive anything that I shouldn't be receiving, but I know that there's an anointing on my life and I believe that when I lay hands on people, uh, amen. The anointing is transferred. Uh, the anointing to heal. Amen. Uh, the anointing to uh, empower. Amen. Praise our God. You know, the apostles, amen, when they went down, uh, Philip uh, did that great work in Samaria, Samaria, Samaria and uh, uh, the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen yet. They sent down uh, uh, Peter and John. And uh, when they got down there, they laid hands on these folks and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The anointing is transferable. The anointing is transferable. Well, praise our God. Listen, um, amen. Verse 47, and when the women saw, when the woman saw that she was not here, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good cheer. Uh, be of good comfort, for your denomination made you whole. No, 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 no. Um, because you're a Jew, you were made whole. Um, no, that's not what he said. He said, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made you whole. Thy faith has made you whole. If you can believe it, you can receive it. All things are possible for them that believe. Your faith has made... Listen, Jesus was mine his own business. That woman's faith made a demand on the healing virtue of Jesus. When she touched his body, her faith made a demand. Well, praise our God. I believe faith can make a demand on the power of God. Okay, listen. Be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. And while he yet spake, there come one from the synagogues, how, ruler, how, saying to him, Thou daughter is dead, trouble not the master. And Jesus, that devil wanted to jump right on there and cause of a lot of fear and unbelief. But Jesus desired to heal that woman. He, he desired to heal, heal you. He desired to heal that daughter. And he says, hey, don't fear, just believe. Don't you fear. Nothing kills faith like fear. But nothing kills fear like faith. You need to believe. Go back to the word of God. Feed the word of God into your spirit. To that thing that'll hold you. Meditate on it. Confess it. Declare it. Amen. Soak in it. Amen. Get away from them unbelievers. Uh, uh, get around people who can believe. Uh, amen. Uh, you can receive your miracle. Well, praise our God. May the Lord bless you. Shed his confidence upon you. Give you peace. Okay? We're going to finish up on this next week. Uh, part two on... All in a normal day in the ministry of Jesus. Let me hear from you. Write me in Jesus' strong name. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.